completely overcast, grey clouds, raining. Seems to be like this all the time at the moment. Let's go and look at some weather apps, see when it's going to clear up. Hi, today I want to talk about something that we all think about as astronomers, and that's the weather. There's one app that I use that I find really useful for astronomy and figuring out when it's going to be clear, as well as a lot of other useful information, and that's called Clear Outside, and it's by First Light Optics. So I just want to run you through that and see what you guys think of it. If you've never heard of it before, stick around. If you know it well, then this might not be the video for you, but here we go. So first of all, you can reach it by going to the First Light Optics website and going to Info and Clear Outside. Alternatively, you can just type in clearoutside.com and get all this information up as well. And we're greeted with this interface here. If I put my area, my town, in my case it's Kesgrave, Ipswich UK, even gives you the longitude and latitude and it will give all the information you need for that area that you've typed in as well as the weather it tells me my bore tool which is how dark my skies are if i click on here i can demonstrate that so this is the bore tool scale it's probably the simplest way of understanding how dark your sky is in your location it's got nine different levels bore tool nine is basically the middle of New York or London or somewhere like that and you can't really see much and Bortle 1 is like the darkest places on earth like the Nevada desert for example. Now my particular location is a Bortle 5 sky in the southeast of England probably about 100 miles north of London so I'm not doing too bad somewhere in the middle kind of average so firstly it's probably quite fun for you to find out that information if you don't know how bright your sky is. Um, it also gives this other information here while we're talking about how good your sky is. It gives you the sky quality because you can buy like um, an SQM L meter which basically registers the luminosity flux from the sky onto a sensor per square arc second. This gives you a reading somewhere between 16 and 22 usually. 16 being middle of London and again 22 being somewhere like the Nevada, Nevada desert. Now all this stuff over here to do with micro candela, that seems a bit technical really so we'll, we'll skip that. Anyway, onwards, so what it does, it gives a seven day forecast, as you can see we've got seven days here. And you can click on the corner bit there to just open up the day you want. And you're inundated with a lot of information here. But at a very quick glance, you can see these colours at the top here. And in a nutshell, if it's green, you're good to go. So these are your hours of the day. So 24 hour clock. So here we can see from my location at about 11 o'clock, the sky is going to be really good to observe and this is updated once an hour so it's pretty accurate and it's over a seven day period as said so red is not good at all amber is it's quite poss possibly going to be okay orange i should say and green good to go so for tonight for me we're looking at 11 o'clock onwards now below that we've got this bar here this basically tells us when it's going to be dark, when it's going to be light, and the one below it is going to tell us when the moon's going to be about. So when it's grey, that's when you can see the moon. And talking of the moon, we've got information about the moon here. If we hover over the moon bit, it will tell us the altitude of the moon, when it's going to rise, when it's going to set, even the distance from Earth. So quite useful. It tells us the percentage of how full it is. So currently we're 94% according to this waning gibbous moon. That's something you won't get from your weather station. 
this is why these apps are great for astronomers because you get all this extra information about the moon also you can see these icons down here it also tells you when there's going to be an international space station transit which is really quite exciting typically as you can see earlier on today at five o'clock when there was a transit and at seven it was cloudy because it's saying red here anyway not only does it give you a total cloud percentage obscured reading where 100 is the sky is completely obscured and zero is it's completely clear also white is completely obscured the color of clouds and dark blue means it's clear as well so two indications there either the number or the color to tell you the percentage of clouds in your sky but it also tells you the percentage of low clouds percentage of medium clouds and a percentage of high clouds as well so really quite in depth because I don't know about you guys but sometimes it looks clear but when you look really closely you can just make out there's some really high cloud and it just makes the sand look bad basically anyway so we've got all this information about the cloud percentage cover ISS Passover which is really useful and visibility I think that's kind of like how far you can see horizontally not you know, obviously not in space because you can see much further than that if you look directly up so I'm assuming this is how far you can see horizontally it also tells you about fog precipitation so rain and lots of other stats down here as well even like the wind as well in miles per hour temperature even what it feels like I don't know I guess that's kind of subjective but maybe it's to do with the wind chill um, the dew point which is obviously a big consideration for astronomers and also the humidity which is also a big consideration if you've got like an SCT and a big correct plate to look after and you've got the usual pressure readings there so this carries on for the next seven days so quite a lot of information there if at first glance it's a bit too confusing they even give you like a how to use guide and you can do like a, a tour and it'll just go through each point and you can pause it if you want a bit longer to read the information but it'll just go through and explain what everything is so that's quite handy and it's available for ios and android as well actually before we go should we look at some cool destinations and just sort of see what the skies are like in different places because you know a bit like the google earth thing where you just want to sort of like do a virtual holiday and see what it's like in australia or somewhere we can see what the weather's like in different places as well so if i go to i don't know new york and we can see what the sky is like there and immediately we can see what we were talking about earlier about the the Bortle class 9 so that that'll be in the middle of a very bright city and therefore you've got that kind of gray sky because it's all washed out by the light pollution and we can see here that it's good to go in the afternoon nice and clear in the afternoon for a bit of solar observing and there's an ISS pass but it'll be daytime in New York so where else can we look at let's look at I mentioned Nevada didn't I so let's look at Nevada USA and I'm, I've got a feeling that's gonna be very dark here yeah. so right at the other end of the scale the Bortle scale we've got class one Bortle skies for Nevada so this is kind of what it's going to look like at the opposite end of the Bortle scale so yeah if you're nosy and you want to see what it's like in different areas you can do that but this app's really useful for seeing what the weather's like in your area planning your night's observation or imaging lunar international space station gives you lots of information and i recommend it so that's it clearoutside.com and it's by first light optics who set that up and we'll leave the video there hope you enjoyed that if you found it useful give me a thumbs up and subscribe affiliate links below first light optics and tell this cloud to sod off see you later